Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. This will be a pathology video on cellular changes and autopsy findings in ischemic heart disease. So this is the third in the series of the videos. This is by Dr. CSBR Prasad, Professor of Pathology, Sri Devra Jaras Medical College. And patterns of infarction, it may be transmural infarction, subendocardial or multifocal microinfarction. What is transmural infarction? Whole thickness of the ventricular wall is infarcted or dead. Whereas subendocardial infarction refers to the uh, death of the tissue in the inner half or inner one third of the um, uh, ventricular wall. So it is uh, known as subendocardial infarction. Multifocal, it is uh, involving irregularly the ventricles or myocardium in different areas, small, small different areas. It is known as multifocal variety of micro infarctions. So you can see that the ischemic damage because of uh, the uh, clot or uh, the obstruction in the coronary anterior descending uh, branch of left coronary artery and uh, the uh, first uh, diagram in the lower half represents the what you call that um, area of risk really area at risk and when it is prolonged ischemia it is associated with the development of infarction or dead tissue involving in the first subendocardial region and then it going to involve the whole thickness of the myocardium and patterns of infarction if you look at uh, the ECG um, depending upon the ECG you will call transmural infarctions are called as STEMI that is ST elevation myocardial infarctions so, so in these uh, transmural infarctions ECG will show the elevation of ST segment and uh, there is one more uh, condition where uh, subendocardial infarctions are known as N uh, STEMI, N STEMI and uh, this N STEMI not associated with ST segment elevation okay and micro infox will may, may have some ECG changes or there may be um, uh, bizarre ECG changes which are difficult to um, what do you call that uh, detect and infarction infarct modification by reperfusion so I told you 20 to 40, first 20 to 40 minutes where it's very cru crucial and this is uh, this time is known as time is myocardium time is myocardium so if you as soon uh, as soon as possible this uh, in this 20 to 40 minutes you should transport the patient uh, so that you uh, have maximum quantity of uh, myocardium which is already uh, damaged can be uh, can be retrieved back to normalcy with uh, effective intervention so what are the what are these effective interventions probably the patient may be subjected to thrombolysis or it may uh, patient may undergo angioplasty or stent replacement uh, or it may be uh, surgically corrected like uh, coronary artery uh, bypass grafting and uh, remember even though i am stressing that uh, 20 to 40 minutes is very crucial for the um, harvesting damaged myocardium to the maximum but uh, remember three to four hours following obstructions are very very critical so myocardial infarction Myocardial necrosis begins approximately 30 minutes after coronary occlusion and uh, cell death by coagulative uh, occurs by coagulative necrosis and apoptosis and uh, reperfusion is there less than 20 minutes is associated with restoration of the uh, cell viability that means we can uh, the, the damaged cell can get back to normalcy and this uh, slides, uh, slide tells you the um, changes that occur in the myocardium when it is ischemically damaged on the onset of ac atp depletion occurs immediately within sec 10 seconds and loss of contractility can be expected to occur within two minutes and uh, with uh, 50 percent of reduction of atp cellular atp in 10 minutes and 90 percent of the atp is disappeared by the end of 40 minutes so this 40 minutes is very crucial and irreversible sec uh, cell injury sets in after 40 minutes and microvascular injury is uh, uh, coming com comes to play after more than one hour so microvascular injury is very important so when uh, you are uh, reperfusing the damaged myocardium after one hour uh, there is a possibility for thrombosis to occur because already endothelial damage uh, has occurred in that area and uh, this uh, damaged endothelium exposes the collagen activates the platelets and again it may cause uh, endothelial swelling or it can cause what is known as thrombosis in the uh, microvasculature and uh, reperfusion may not be associated with um, uh, recovery recovery so, okay 
So what are the arteries uh, that are involved? I told you there are three arteries that may be involved, left anterior descending, right coronary artery, left cor circumflex artery. So if the left anterior uh, descending artery is involved and you will see anterior and apical uh, portions of the left ventricle and uh, two thirds of interventricular septum are the ones which are info infarcted. You can see that uh, the first uh, left top diagram wherein you will see the anterior wall is involved in this and also uh, the two thirds of uh, the anterior two thirds of interventricular septum is also involved in this process. And the right um, coronary artery, if it is involved, it is associated with post and basal left ventricle and also posterior one third of uh, interventricular septum uh, are getting affected. You see the lower half on the left, the lower portion, lower uh, diagram on the left, you can see that the uh, posterior wall is involved including the apex and also posterior one third of the interventricular septum is um, uh, went into the ischemic damage. And if uh, right, uh, left circumflex artery is involved, lateral wall of the left ventricle is, uh, um, um, I mean, uh, uh, undergoes in infarction. You can see that uh, middle diagram on the left, uh, lateral wall of the left ventricle uh, marked as black area, that is the area of infarction. Okay. So left anterior descending is the most common artery that is involved in this process of uh, the um, obstruction or uh, followed by right coronary artery and uh, lastly left uh, circumflex artery is the one which is involved. So topmost is left anterior descending common. And uh, the same thing is a question form most common site for uh, myocardial infarction most common, uh, common artery involved in MI. So the left uh, anterior descending is the most common artery that is involved and the most common uh, uh, area that is involved is the apex and anterior portions of the left ventricular wall and anterior two thirds of the interventricular septum. Okay. So this uh, uh, the following two um, tables tells us the microscopic changes and gross changes uh, in the heart when it is involved in this ischemic damage. So first half an hour we may not appreciate change either uh, microscopically or grossly and uh, uh, at the end of uh, four hours probably you may appreciate in microscopically waviness imparted to the muscles muscle but not nothing can be seen grossly and 4 to 12 hours um, occasionally dark uh, darkening of the area of infarction and mottling of the area of infarction that can be appreciated grossly microscopically you may see the onset of coagulatory necrosis okay and 12 to 24 hours dark mottling you can uh, demarcate the area and there is neutrophilic infiltration, neutrophilic infiltration and coagulation, um, ne coagulatory necrosis set, uh, set in very well. And the one to three days yellow to, uh, yellowness imparted to the infected area because of fatty change and loss of striations can be appreciated microscopically and neutrophils can be appreciated there. And three to seven days you will see hyperemia of the borders of the infected area. It is due to granulation tissues uh, forming at that area and uh, you will see the infiltration of macrophages in that area and phagocytosis undergoing actively and uh, the, after one week after one week and uh, this uh, uh, granulation tissue forms at the dead uh, uh, in the myocardial infarction area and after 10 days to two weeks you will see the area getting depressed and um, the new blood vessels and collagen getting formed in that area. So how to remember easily, if you reco recollect your uh, uh, the general pathology, inflammation, so the earliest uh, cell that comes into the area of injury is the neutrophil and any uh, neutrophil comes to picture within 24 hours of injury or damage. So if you see a neutrophil in uh, the infected area, the infected infarct is more than 24 hours. And uh, the macrophage comes into picture after three hours, after three days. So if you see macrophages in the infarcted area, it is more than three days. And uh, granulation tissue forms around seven, seven days or one week at the end of one week. And if you see granulation tissue, which imparts hyperemia to the infarcted area, probably uh, this infarct is more than one week old. If it is depressed and fibrotic, probably it is more than two weeks old. So this is uh, the um, technique we employ to identify the infarction which is not uh, normally can be appreciated by gross examination or microscopic examination. So early infarcts 
can be appreciated by applying the um, triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride chemical onto the cut surface of the heart muscle. So fresh heart muscle, that is very important. And if you apply this uh, chemical, the infarcted area lighted up with uh, what is known as uh, the brownish area. It will not brownish, uh, lighted up with uh, brownish color, whereas uh, the other healthy muscle, healthy muscle or non-infarcted area will have brick red coloration. And uh, this is the one day old in fact, you can see that uh, thinned out myocardial fibers, loss of nuclei and in, in between the fibers there is a lot of uh, gap due to edema and this is uh, wavy, this uh, fibers also not straight, they are wavy. So this is one day old in fact, microscopically. And you can see that uh, the macrophages and neutrophils coming into picture in the case of um, the three day old in fact. And uh, say one week world in Fox is appreciated by the presence of fibroblasts, macrophages and proliferating capillary channels which you call it as the, um, call, um, the granulation tissue. And uh, granulation tissue again in the early stages and granulation tissue in late stages where there is predominance of uh, the bluish colored uh, um, areas representing uh, what is known as collagenization, predominant collagenization. Uh, heart muscle you can appreciate the red uh, nodules okay and this is uh, the scar formation in the infarcted area and the uh, infarcted area uh, in the course of time if we examine the heart you will see either yellowish or whitish as represented by this arrows and microscopically you will see fibroblastic proliferations replacing the lost tissue so at the center you can see that uh, pale area it is fibrosed area and uh, reperfusion injury, reperfusion is associated with certain recovery of uh, the uh, damaged myocardium. But uh, if, the, if it is more than one hour, reperfusion may be associated with certain detrimentalities. What, do you, what are those uh, detrimentalities? Probably the patient may develop arrhythmia or the patient may develop what is known as um, no ref reflow also because of endothelial uh, swelling, endothelial damage and uh, the thrombus formation at that uh, area and even if it is um, reperfused probably the myocardium may not uh, get develop the functionality for a longer period of time so it is known as stunned myocardium so reperfusion injury is associated with uh, the microscopic changes of uh, the appreciation of contraction bands so contraction band necrosis as you see here uh, the reddish um, lines reddish thick lines uh, the, in the microscopic image and the, they represent a contraction band necrosis which is the evidence of reperfusion injury thanks for watching do subscribe to this channel